money right like that easily so like right. in fairness strategically they must have made sense for the feds because you had you know you had access that kind of a lot of guys didn't have right well i was with ronnie 24 7 if he had a holster i would be in it put it that way how about yeah. that that's how i was with him Vinny too when i was in with Vinny, when i when ronnie was in jail he told me you report to my uncle so now, I'm, like I said, I'm reporting to Ronnie, oh, uh, to Vinny now, Sarah. And I like, me and Vinny got along genuinely because he's a maniac like me. And he believes in violence and he believes in robbing. And that's why he liked me because he knew that's, he likes real street guys. He don't like these yeah. little wannabe pay rent the buttons. He likes the guys that are really hands on his era. He like his yeah. guys, you know, so he felt yeah. like that with me. Ronnie did too with me. So that's why I was so close with them. And that's not only the wise guys who hung out. I was with Mike all the time. I was with Pat Avon. All the whole crew, we all hung out. Yeah. But I was mainly with Ronnie all the time and Vinny a lot, you know? Well, I heard this story about, and, and this is where I, I think you guys had uh, an I don't care attitude. Because I heard this story on our old show about Peter Tuccio basically thumbing his nose at your old crew, the Bonanno guys. And they were, I think, had their button at their time, two or three of them. And they knew it was Joe Cafe's, you know, nephew. Oh, ah, yeah, but Joe Cafe's yeah, and, they, done. Yeah, and they didn't give a shit. Yeah, Joey Cafe's a peon, though. He's got the guy never been a fist fight. You know, they don't care about these people. But yeah. you guys in this this calibers to people, you know, that wise guys. Like I said, you're supposed to respect it, but they know who's really tough and who's not. You know what I'm saying? Like his uncle, it's not first of all, it's not even his uncle. It's his uh it's it's through marriage. And um they, they Joey Cafe couldn't stand his nephew. P2 show was supposed to originally be with me. And that's what they were trying to do. Yeah, because the father didn't want him hanging out with Mike Flamacia because he thought Mike Flamacia was a clown. So he, the father came to me around Ronnie in his house and said, listen, if he's going to be hanging out, let him hang out with you. I don't want him with this jerk off. That's what the thing was. So P. Tuccio was doing things for me at first and yeah. running around with us. But I actually liked the kid. I had, not, yeah. I actually liked him. I did. I liked him. Are you, are you surprised? Now, as of now... As of now, and I know tomorrow you have a big appointment, which right. we get to. We won't, you know, we'll leave that alone for now. Um, were you surprised he stood up for 10 years for not a, not a petty crime? I was I was always skeptical with him. You know what I mean? I wasn't sure. I, yeah. I think 10 years for an Austin, I'll say this is ridiculous. I yeah. think that's the most ridiculous. The kid, like, you know, I had a, I had a laundry. When I confessed to crimes, I had like 30 Austins, like a list of it. It was like I my lawyer used to, my, my prosecutor used to go, I have your list of crimes and we just be categories. And then, you know, and Austin is serious, but I had like dozens and dozens of them, like for the mafia. You don't, you're not supposed to get 10 years. He did that to himself with the pictures he was taking and putting it up on Instagram. And he made them believe something else. Like this got kid's it. connected to this guy. We got to put it. pressure on him. And he did it to himself. He got himself 10 years, put it that way. But not just that, like in this day and age, God knows if there's even a mob left in 10 years. Um, is it worth the button? You know, because I guess. Hell no. Now it's over. That shit is completely washed up, bro. It is so bad now. It's like, a, it is comical, like almost. The mafia's on YouTube. <laughs> well, I, uh, again, we, we, you know, neither of us will say names, but I get, sh I'm shocked. I like when I talk to you, you know, we talk a lot, but once in a while we'll talk or I'll talk to Johnny A. Light or I'll talk to some other guys. Current guy, and I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you fraternize or violate your parole, but what I'm saying is in general, the guys that I say, let me say in general. Guys, because nowadays I'd be careful what you say. Oh, by the way, entertainment purposes only, right? A lot of guys that I talk to, um, how about this? I'll give one quick story. I was with somebody who flipped. We went to go for drinks. And when we were at drinks, and I'll tell you who after, he introduced me to four or five active guys. And I'm sitting there like, what the F is going on? And he's like, yeah, I'm still not active in the streets, but I'm still cool who, who I was cool with. Well, like, that, that's how you know the mob's over. Yeah. And that's how you know their life is over. You're yeah. supposed to be killed on sight. You know, yeah. Guys like us walking around right now is a joke. You're supposed to get, in the 80s, they'd be hit squads. Of people just line up trying to fucking murder you in the street. You know what I'm saying? It's just not like that no more. You think I'd be walking through Howard Beach in the 80s? Are you crazy? Yeah. I'd be yeah. in a fucking barrel of acid. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's over nowadays. You know, I could walk down Cross Bay with my fucking, with a sign on me. Says, I'm Gene Burrell the rat. They still fucking won't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. All right. So back to the R word. Right. Um, so what happened? So you got picked up, long indictments. What happened after that point? Um,